this project is Apache Storm. Uh, there's uh, complex event processing. Uh, so I'll show you an example. The, with complex event processing, uh, the model is that you 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 uh, you write a SQL-like query, tell in what need to be done. If you could read that, basic it says from the player data stream, that's a data stream. It says take the window of one minute and then calculate the average. Right. So this is just like your SQL, you know. So uh, uh, let me raise this run, and while it's run, I can, I'll talk. So this is a demo we did. The data was collected from a real football game. There were sensors on the, the boots of the players and in the ball. Okay. So each sensor tells the time, the location, the velocity, and acceleration. Right. So using that data set, this is a uh, video of the game, sorry, this on YouTube, uh, and slides have a link, go and check later. This is the video of the real uh, game, that is the visualization, and these are some of the stats calculated that updated real time, okay? And this is done using complex event processing. And the, it done using like about, say, 100 to 200 lines of queries. Okay. So check it out. I won't go into too much detail here. Oh, sorry, let me quickly show you one thing. So this, for example, we did that at the time of the World Cup. So here you could see, sorry. Uh, so the, when interesting things happen like offsides, etc., this would like add annotation on top of it. <laughs> okay. Not from my machine, hopefully, right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, the la the there's a. There's one more, there are two more things I want to talk about different tools. Uh, one is that there's, there's something called Lambda architecture. The, despite the name, uh, what that means is the, this, this is a technology to put the, both the batch and real-time technologies together and build systems. Right? For example, uh, uh, you might, so uh, let's say, you want to do some analysis using uh, what happened on a football game. But for that analysis, you also factor in what happened right now, also what happened so far in the game. What was the average speed the player ran today? And you want to compare against how fast the player is running now. So you want to combine the real-time data, also the data that's come from through a longer period of time, combining those two. So the, I won't, again, talk too much about this, but uh, these, uh, these types of design let you uh, do those kind of use cases. Uh, then finally, machine learning. So there's a lot of machine learning tools. Uh, if you are starting, most probably go for R or scikit-learn. These, both of them are like very simple to use to get started with. Uh, I don't go in here too much. Again, I'll come back to a lot of examples in a minute. Okay. So, so far, we talk about what is big data, and we talk about different technologies that let you uh, do analysis on big data. So now let's go and try to understand how you actually solve a problem, some of the use cases. I don't go in too much detail, but some of the use cases. So, uh, before to understand some of the complexities associated with working with big data, let me take example. In the World War II, 
so if you are a hi history bluff, you might know that there is at some point the, the uh, Europe, they were like bombing Germany very, uh, the US and uh, Britain, they were bombing Germany exhaustively, destroying everything. Uh, th at that point, actually, the uh, so the uh, at one point the German uh, counter uh, the air force was so good, the uh, for a year about a pilot's uh, life expectancy was about fifty percent. Every year, about half of them died, right? So then uh, they did some analysis to understand, now, okay, okay, if you know about the aircraft, like you can't put a lot of armor, right? If you put a lot of armor, it will get heavier, right? So the it heavy means it go even slow. So you, you, so they decide, okay, we can't put armor, armor every time. Can they put armor at very specific places? So what they did was they look at all the aircraft that returned, right? They check where there was the hits, right? Great. And, okay, they were going to put, now if you think about that, okay, fine, you are going to put armor there. That's where it was being hit. Then there was this guy, he was a mathematician. He came and said, I got stupid, what are you doing? Okay, then when, when they asked for explanation, they said, that's very important thing you have to understand about this data you only have half of the data. You, are, you have data for all the aircraft that returned. This means that these aircrafts were hit on these specific places, but they made back. But for the, all the aircraft that didn't came back, you don't have your data. For example, look at the head or look at those propellers. If they were hit, the aircraft is gone, right? You could see that the uh, if the pilot cockpit or the cockpit is not marked. Because if cockpit is hit, it won't come back. Right? So you have to realize that you have only the half of the data, right? And he basically said, put armor where it, there was no hits. Because even if you hit there, it can come back, no problem. But if you hit on other places, you are in trouble. That's where you need armies. So this also leads to a very interesting observation about big data. If, if you learn, if you think about the scientific method you learn on school, or the experiment that we do, we always have a con controlled experiment. We control how what we do. We change something, you, we keep something constant. But in world of big data, you don't have that unless you have control. There are some cases real that you have that. Generally, you just collect the data, right? So you don't get to select the sample. You don't know whether you have all the data or the half of the data. You don't know what happened of other cases, etc. That make your life very hard, okay? This is one of the reasons actually stats people were very afraid or they don't want to do anything with big data because they go crazy because they always start with experiment. They want to know where it's collected and all these things. The big data can't answer them. But that does not mean big data is useless. It's just, it's harder to make sense. The, what they say is, using big data, you could tell correlation. You could tell when A goes up, the B also goes up. But you cannot tell causality. You cannot tell A cause B to happen. The very famous example was that uh, people were analyzing what are the two products that are bought together. The one, uh, you may have heard this, the, it came out, the diapers and beers apparently goes together. Why? The, the reason, one explanation was that the, the dads, when they were supposed to babysit, they grabbed the diaper, then, okay, you are alone by definition if you are visiting, so, okay, fine, I'll have a beer. So, but here the, the cause, cause of this thing is the, the having to babysit, not that the diaper caused the beer or the other way around. 
right so again you have to be very careful what what do you derive because the if you just look at two variables and then to reduce the second one you somehow forceful reduce the first one that doesn't do what you need because if there is a third thing that actually driving the both up so so these are some of the challenges uh, so the so that does not mean you cannot apply a lot of techniques that means you have to spend time thinking where does the data comes from how it was collected what do they mean and what when you derive something what does that mean you have to think through the scenarios so uh, this is very roughly the uh, the life cycle of data analysis so start with, you start with raw data you clean it up you generally explore and generally you come up with a rough model of how it works now the word model sometimes scares people the model could be simple as a regression line or a, like the what we were talking before that just i improve it from 1% to 6% it may be going from 70% to 99% but uh, it could be very simple thing to very complicated neural network but the model is a general word it's a way to make addition so then uh, you you learn a model by using that data the it's very very important generally especially because of the earlier limitations i taught you have to verify whether that works the very famous way to do this is ab testing that is have a control experiment change one compare etc at least so what this is saying is when you collect the data you cannot verify where it came from at least the results you when before you apply you you verify actually you are whether you are what you derive are working out in the field and if it doesn't you come back etc okay so then uh, as i said before there are four things you are trying to do the hindsight oversight insight and foresight let's go through each one of them the first case you want to know what happened this is the most simple case here basically you use things like map reduce you go through the data and you calculate important things here a very useful word is kpi or key performance indicators for your use case you want to decide what is useful for example for retail shops such a kpi is how much profit you made per square feet of your uh, your shop right so like there are numbers like that that make sense on each use case generally you want to work with the domain somebody who understand domain what makes sense but most of the time then the analysis in in involve calculating things like minimum maximum average etc and sometime doing heat maps etc but they they are basic stats there's nothing too complicated you you something like my producer analyze parallelly and get the data uh most often you want to first know some interesting patterns and you want to uh, dig in for example you might see that uh Uh, let's say you are you are looking at the how long does it take to respond to a customer issue and uh, if you uh, if you decide, if you see that okay this taking too long you might want to dig in and know how which cases were bad etc you want to go in and look more detail etc that's called drill down uh, so uh, the uh, there's there's technology is called the general term is OLAP this 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 these are the the actually old technology the they basically take a data set and look at in many dimensions look in detail and zoom in and zoom out so they still the same ideas work right sometime you might have to take lot of data and compress it down so that you could apply that using the old technologies okay uh very very good use case of, of this is planning Uh, so, uh, for example, there's uh, there's work uh, going in at uh, Linnaeus 
on uh, trying to look at the call data records uh, so if you go to the uh, this link you will find uh, and trying to understand the mobility and the where the people live etc in colombo right so the, the so the very uh, very good use case of this is urban planning because the, okay things doesn't change very fast right you have time right sometimes you have years even so to to understand what's going on the behavior etc you have time to go and analyze etc same for market research etc okay so the next thing to be a little bit more advanced is oversight you want to know what's going on but know it fast if fast enough you can go and react here the one side is you want to calculate your kpis very fast then you generally need some alarm some warning bells going on when something wrong and you go and try to fix those things uh, the common use cases are like fraud uh, so I'll let me come sorry these are some of the use cases the use cases could be like tracking vehicles tracking wildlife uh, respond to emergencies like for example the the Boeing they are building a new system which basically uh, when you take aircraft the goal aircraft is so expensive that idea is keep it operational as much as possible so if there's a fault they want to be ready diagnosis know it and part ready and ready to be replaced by the time it land so the respond to the this, the emergencies and then things like de detecting different trends uh, this this there's a lot of use case at stock market when it knowing when it's going up and going down etc and then things like uh, building profiles extracting relationships etc uh, the technologies that we use here uh, sorry sorry uh, sorry the second the next class third class which is inside trying to understand what's going on the very common thing is mining understand common patterns for example you want to know what two products were bought together the the B and I for example I told earlier was came like that then the clustering is about grouping similar items together okay the uh, graph analysis so I, I have few examples let me let me go to each one okay the the clustering means given a data set find items that are very similar to each other right for example uh, in uh, in medical diagnosis they some sometimes use uh, the when when they take the x-ray they cluster it against the known x-rays and whether it goes to a uh, the group of x-rays that are healthy or non-healthy might give you some idea it, or against some disease it might give you some idea the same ideas used for for example crime analysis so if when you look where the crimes happen you could tell roughly where the the person uh, is living if he's uh, somebody who do recurrent actions because he wouldn't do anything very close to his home but there's a limit he could travel so uh, the by clustering and no looking at grouping different activities and you could tell uh, uh, you could guess um, what's happening so the uh, and there are a lot of other use cases then uh, the second very famous use case is graph analytics right so there's a lot of many types of graphs uh, very famous use case of on top of this is called there's something called triangle counting uh, the idea is that you want to count you want to know people who are part of so many triangles these are people who has lot of influence over the others the re, the earlier people was not doing triangles they just count who, who has lot of links but then what happens is famous people has lot of links but they don't have any influence over the people it just they can't change the behavior but the triangle means if 
he and he has links to me, they know each other also. That create a triangle. That by that unless you could find people who has influence. So if you want to like sell something, you better off going and uh, basically pitch into that guy because if he buys it, it's very likely that he can uh, get the word to a lot of other people. Uh, the third case is uh, modeling. Uh, for example, uh, the modeling the solar system. Now, when I first heard about this problem, I thought it's 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 a something that you do all the weekend, because the all the equation we know, even from A levels we know. No, there's a little catch. The catch is that this when you write the equation, it becomes there's this. Uh, there's, it's, it's about velocity and etc. Uh, then the partial differential equations, there's no solution. Nobody knows how to solve those partial di differential equations that came out of it. So the way these are uh, analyst, analyzed are by doing simulations. You move everything by delta t, recalculate the location and velocity etc. You do that, you keep doing that. So there's a lot of problems like that where you can't solve, but you solve it simulation. So this, this is another way of understanding a system. So if you know, if you know, or if you have a guess of how it's working, you might do a simulation and you try to check your simulation against what actual data, what data tells you and try to like uh, finally figure out the right model. Okay, the last case, or rather very f the f most famous case is foresight. How do you predict? Uh, here there are few classes. Uh, one is you want to predict the future value. Okay, one is classification. You want to know which group something belongs to. Uh, or you want to find something that's not of common behavior, something of the different behavior. And the last case is you want to make recommendations. If he bought that book, okay, uh, what what are the other books he might like? Things the, for example, I mentioned do. Uh, so, so these are some of, again, some of the technologies. Let me again give you a few examples. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, predicting electricity demand, right? The electricity demand is a, uh, is a repetitive task every day. Generally, like the, there's load in Sri Lankan case, actually there's load in the afternoon. Uh, but uh, in actually most of the developed countries, load is on the daytime where the factories are running. Uh, but it's basically it's a repetitive cycle. So the generally how you would predict the load is basically figuring out this uh, what are those cycles and correct the load to a straight line and then apply regression okay so uh, and then you could generally get pretty good accurate uh, the another very famous example is uh, the predictive maintenance. This is again you are trying to look at the data and guess when something could break. Right? And uh, basically fix it before it happens. Because there's a lot of industries where the downtime or a failure is very, very expensive. So this could take, it could save a lot of money if you can guess. At least not 100% cases, at least 50% cases, if you can guess something bad going to happen, that's a lot, right? The final case is the target marketing. This is, uh, or, and, or recommendations. This is you are trying to understand what people did and trying to find what he, other things he would like, etc. The, for example, the, in Amazon, etc about 70 percent of the uh, the sales are driven by recommendations it's a very powerful part of uh, their their process okay so 
so let me wrap up. So we talk about big data, what it is, uh, uh, what it is, why do we care about it, how it can make a difference. We talk about different properties, different tools, and we looked at different kind of problems you could solve using big data. Uh, thanks very much, and I could take any questions. All right, in that case, let's get started. Uh, my name is Dilan. Uh, I'm here to talk about software in the cloud. Uh, that's pretty much my bio. If you can't recognize the guy there, well, it's it's the same person. It's you know like with any any software, you know you get version two. That's 1.3. This is version two. Same functionality, different UI, right? So we'll be talking about that aspect, cloud, very specifically today. But a lot of it ties into web development, mobile development, service API development, um, and hopefully, as uh, as I mentioned there. There should be something for everyone. So, if you're if you're a pure techie, definitely there's something there for you. For those who are from uh, slightly more management uh, or test-oriented tracks, no worries. There should be something there for you to pick up as well. Uh, the way this session has been arranged is that it recounts a series of stories, a series of experiences that I've been through, um, and ultimately uh, we try to extract some sort of overall learning and some. Uh, approaches that can be used. Uh, most of my experience has been operating the offshore consulting model, so obviously a lot of what I will be discussing will be from that perspective. So when we come to the Q&A session, or the Q&A part of this session, you know, if any of you all have uh, varying experiences that are in alignment or, or different, please feel free to share those experiences because I think that would just uh, help everyone. What this session is not, well, you know the usual uh, cloud session where, you're, where people explain to you what IaaS, uh, platform as a service, uh, you know, what those basic definitions are. Th this session isn't about that. It's, it's moving on or building on 